Now that we know all of the ins and outs on what Canelo contract consists of with the PBC and why Canelo and the PBC parted ways, we're going to break it down in this video. I'm going to give y'all all of the information, but before we do that, make sure you hit my like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subbed to the channel. Like I said, now that I got all of the ins and the outs and the outs and the ins on what went down with Canelo Alvarez and the PBC, I'm going to tell y'all, Canelo think he's slick. I know there's been a whole lot of people defending Canelo Alvarez's actions. Now, when I tell y'all the ins and the outs of what went on, y'all can go ahead and decide who was in the wrong. If PBC was in the wrong or if Canelo was in the wrong. But one thing I know is Canelo Alvarez, he was trying to get the biggest bag without having to take any risk. And I'm going to let y'all know, Canelo had three opponents that he agreed to when he signed that PBC contract. I'm going to let y'all know exactly who they was, and we're going to talk about all of it. Now, like I said, I see a lot of people coming out trying to do damage control for Canelo Alvarez. And the main one is Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn now all of a sudden is coming out saying, oh, Canelo will fight Benavidez. Tell Benavidez, why don't he come over here and do business with the zone and Canelo, we can make that fight. Eddie Hearn is the biggest liar in boxing. He's full of shit. This is something that we always have to deal with in boxing. A whole bunch of lies, a whole bunch of bluffing and pump faking. When we already know that Canelo is not going to fight David Benavidez under no circumstances at all. Absolutely no circumstances. But I'll explain all of that to you in this video. And Canelo made that clear on several occasions behind the scenes when Benavidez's team tried to negotiate with Canelo, even offering him the biggest payday of his whole entire career. And he still wouldn't take it. What really went on behind the scenes is when Canelo signed with the PBC, he signed up and he originally was trying to fight Jamal Charlo. Now, we know at that point in time, Jamal Charlo was going through a lot. Jamal Charlo had been out of the ring almost three years. Jamal Charlo was going through mental health issues and Jamal Charlo was just in a mess. So for Canelo to call himself the best fighter in the world, the top pound for pound fighter in the world, and try to call himself one of the all time greats of Mexican fighters. Why are you trying to fight a man that's been out of the ring for almost three years, that's going through therapy, mental health issues, alcohol abuse, and everything that Jamal Charlo was going through? So the PBC said, we're not going to give you Jamal Charlo, but if you come over here with the PBC and you sign with us, we'll give you Jamal Charlo. And of course, Canelo jumped right on top of that. You mean to tell me you're going to let me fight Jamal Charlo that has to move up two weight divisions that's also been out of the ring for 16 months and that's coming off of hand surgery? Yeah, I'll take that. But that's not all. In order for the PBC to get Canelo to sign with them, they also said in the second fight, we'll let you fight Jamal Charlo then. And then after that, guess who? If Errol Spence gets past Terrence Crawford, we'll let you fight Errol Spence. So yeah, the three opponents were Jamel Charlo, who had to move up two weight divisions, and Jamal Charlo that was going to be out of the ring for almost three years, and Errol Spence, who would be moving up almost three weight divisions, because with the Errol Spence agreement, him and Errol Spence were going to fight at a catch weight at like 164, 165. Now, I know a lot of people are already saying, well, why did he agree in the contract to fight Errol Spence at 164 and 165? But now he's saying that he's not willing to fight Terrence Crawford at 164 and 165. Well, it's because Canelo Alvarez realized that he don't want any type of challenge. Now, do I think that Terrence Crawford can beat Canelo Alvarez? Absolutely not. But 
I don't know how Canelo feels in his mind. So, yeah, the fighter that y'all are running around defending, calling one of the best Mexican fighters of all time, the pound for pound fighter and all of that. He wanted to make a man move up two way divisions, fight another man off of almost three year layoff and have another man move up three weight divisions. This is y'all champion. This is the guy that you're defending. So Canelo ended up going through with the Jamel Charlo fight. We saw what happened in the Jamel Charlo fight in the PBC. They lost a lot of money in that fight because they still had to pay Canelo Alvarez his guarantee of 35 million and they had to pay Jamel Charlo whatever they promised him. And we know that Jamel Charlo also got his highest payday. Now, the pay-per-view numbers did okay. I believe it did like 700,000 pay-per-view buys or maybe 600,000. I can't remember, but it did okay. But the PBC, they're saying that they lost out on money on that. So the next fight up for Canelo is Jamal Charlo. Now, Jamal Charlo, he looked okay in his return to the ring, but he fought a 147 pounder. He got touched up in that fight. His defense looked horrible. And the PBC realized that Jamal Charlo is still not ready to be in the mega fight like that. And Jamal Charlo no longer has the following in boxing that he had at one point in time because Jamal was just out of the sport too long. He lost a lot of fans, a lot of fans that he did have when he was at his highest point. Those fans are no longer watching boxing. So they realized that Jamal Charlo is just not a sell like that. So with that being said, PBC, they didn't want to lose out on a second consecutive fight, putting on the fight that the fans are really not interested in. The fans are not interested in seeing Jamal Charlo and Canelo Alvarez. Plus, a lot of these casual fans, they would think it's just a rematch because Jamal and Jamel, a lot of people don't even know that they twins. So PBC, they're not in the business of losing money. So they actually gave Canelo Alvarez an ultimatum. They said, we know that you have these fights in your contract. Errol Spence already lost, right? You don't, why would Canelo want to go into a fight with Errol Spence when he looked like he did against Terrence Crawford? Well, they didn't even get that far, but Errol Spence was supposedly in the contract, right? So when it comes to Jamal Charlo, they said, okay, We'll let you fight Jamal Charlo. We'll pay you the 35 million for Jamal Charlo only if you agree to fight David Benavidez in your third fight. Now, David Benavidez was not in the contract with the PBC because, of course, Canelo wouldn't assign if David Benavidez was in that contract with PBC because he absolutely does not want to fight David Benavidez. And now that David Benavidez, after his last two performances, Canelo definitely don't want no parts of David Benavidez. So the PBC, they gave him an ultimatum. They said, okay, we still want to do business, but and we still will pay you the 35 million. But you just got to agree to fight David Benavidez in your third fight and we'll pay you more. They offered him 55 million to fight David Benavidez. And that's what happened. He did not want to fight David Benavidez. They couldn't come to an agreement. So they agreed to part ways. And the whole reason why is because of one name, David Benavidez. Canelo Alvarez thought that he was gonna go over there and rob the fans and rob the PBC and get three easy fights on his resume and move on to do whatever he wanted to do after that. And PBC said, nah, that's not how we doing business. So you can either do business like this or you can walk and they decided to part ways. It had nothing to do with the PBC didn't have the money in the escrow account and all of those lies that you hear from guys like Rick Glazier and all these other clowns that want to tell you these lies because they're protecting Canelo Alvarez. And PBC shouldn't have to pay Canelo Alvarez no 55 million and beg him to fight David Benavidez. Because David Benavidez is his mandatory and has been his mandatory for years. If the WBC and these sanctioning bodies do what they're supposed to do, 
we wouldn't even be having this conversation. We will be talking about a fight between Canelo and David Benavidez, or we will be talking about Canelo being stripped of the WBC strap. So whatever y'all want to say, all of the protection that you want to give Canelo, it comes down to he should be fighting David Benavidez regardless of anything because that's his mandatory. Anyway, y'all let me know how y'all feel about this. Drop a comment in the comment section. Make sure you hit my like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already sub. And y'all already know how I do. Dango talking that boxing again and I'm gone. Choking on that lead, two miles per hour, so everybody's eating.